For the last several weeks, I've been doing testing on my gravity flyer. I'm actually getting ready to lift this thing. All the understanding is almost done. I understand exactly what this thing is doing now. And it all happened when I hooked in my piezo buzzer and I started to get different effects going on. Some of it you didn't recognize right away. Some of it came out in an extraordinary way. Some of it was making more energy in the craft than actually it started with. And you would see it ramp up very quickly. So let me do this. Let's just start where I started to understand this. Let's go back to the ion lifter. And let's look at exactly how we all saw that. And then the second generation of ion lifter. This is one that very few people really understand because it doesn't work on ion wind. It actually works on polarization or charged particles. So let's go through both of those and then we'll get right into the gravity flyer and exactly the way this thing looks like it's going to lift and what factors go into it. Anyway, let's take a look. This is our basic ion lifter. We have 30 gauge bare wire at the top. We have aluminum foil as a skirt around the bottom. And we have high voltage positive to the top on a 30 gauge wire. And a high voltage ground connecting to the actual foil that goes around it. We know that the top has to be sharp. Again, that's the wire. And then we know the bottom has to be rounded. Very few sharp points at all. And what this does is create ion wind. We usually get our power from a CRT TV, or most generally, the power is from a CRT TV or a tube TV. As you can see, it lifts this lister just fine. An alternative to using the CRT TV circuit. We can also make a circuit with an AC flyback and a voltage multiplier. And again, you'll have lift. The next evolution in building an ion lifter is to give it multiple points where it can create more ion wind and multiply the wind. We have four sections in this one. Each one produces more ion wind. In order to increase the ion wind produced, we can build this in layers. This model has two different layers, both producing ion wind. We can actually add most of the secondary level of ion wind to the primary level of ion wind. Another way to put more power into your ion lifter is to build it out. As you can see in this model, the gentleman has built more and more layers on the outside, amplifying the amount of ion wind that comes out of it. Yet, it's still lifting on ion wind. One of the main problems with ion lifters is weight. Can you add more weight to it than the weight of the craft itself? And the answer is, not with ion wind. To find out why, we put an ion lifter in a vacuum chamber and look to see exactly how many ions are coming off of it. Next, we're going to add some fog to this experiment. We're going to see exactly how much airflow ion wind actually produces. As you can see, it's not enough to make a true thrust. So the next logical question is, can't we just build an ion thruster? Wouldn't it produce enough to give us more thrust? The problem is, it only gives you 2.4 to 2.9 meters per second in each individual module that you set up. When you look at this experiment at night, you start to understand why. Between the top point and the bottom point, you have a finite space. The ion wind has to be produced in that space. And it is just a leftover amount of energy that's pushed out the bottom as ion wind. Even when running multiple thrusters, you're only getting a 15% increase for each level that you add. The weight becomes more than the ions produced. 
Now that we know ion wind itself is not enough to produce lift when you add weight, let's go on to the second generation of ion lifter. This is one that people rarely, rarely understand. The wire is put much higher. As you can see, we have about 8 to 9 inches between the wire and the actual aluminum part of the craft. Typical ion wind crafts only work based on the distance between the wire and a piece of aluminum foil to create a high voltage hiss. However, in this craft, no high voltage hiss occurs. So it begs the question, what's actually going on here? The high voltage on the top itself on the wire is putting out a positive charge. The actual part of the lifter on the bottom where the tin foil is, it's putting out a charge. When you get those charges trying to meet each other or trying to come together, just like two magnets would come together, you get a certain effect. The top wire pulls the bottom foil up. It so wants to be together, just like two magnets, that it actually pulls it up and it pulls it up with a lot of force. I froze this image here so you can tell exactly where the wire is and how much electricity is actually going through this thing in order to create this lift. Here's the actual power source used in this experiment. We have a ZVS, we have an AC flyback coil, and we have a voltage multiplier circuit, much like the ion thruster we saw earlier. So in this configuration, can we actually hold weight? As we can see, the stick is not only sitting on the craft, but it actually clings to the craft, telling you something more is going on there. So let's do something a little bit more. Let's go ahead and take this craft and let's fold in the sides. We're going to make a completely flat bottom on this. This, in theory, should change a basic ion lifter. As we can see, we are still really far apart between the wire itself and the bottom, and now we are completely flat. Let's see if it lifts again. As you can see, it still lifts again, and it's lifting with weight. I understand what everybody thinks. As a skeptic myself, I would ask, what's going on on the other piece of the wood? Well, let's find out if it lifts with the weight without a problem. Back in the traditional ion lifter look, we have right here a stick. On a stick, we have a brushless DC motor. Let's see if this craft will lift again, but this time, without anybody's hands touching anything, we'll see if this craft can lift with that little motor and that little stick on it. Generally, ion lifters cannot do this. Let's find out if we're dealing with something different here. And again, it lifts. Not much for balance. But it does lift. This makes you ask the question, is this a traditional ion lifter? And the basic answer is no. It's working on a different premise than an ion lifter altogether. It's working on polarization or the difference in charges between the small and big plate. As we look more into the charges on this, and we want to see the effect, we take a bigger plate and we put it on top of the styrofoam, the pink styrofoam that's on top of the actual scale. We then put a smaller plate above it. As you turn the power on, it creates a strong force in one direction. When we pulse this, we actually start to see the force change. The larger plate wants to meet the smaller plate. 
When this happens and we make the smaller plate even smaller, we start to get a loss of weight. As you can see, we can measure this on the scale. Now let's set this up in the configuration of our gravity flyer. The very top disc will be our piezo buzzer. The second disc down will be our top spinning disc. The next disc down will be our center plate. In normal operation of our gravity flyer, our piezo disc can only make contact with our upper plate. The charges coming down from the piezo disc would cancel out some of the charges from our rotating disc. However, it does not cancel them all, but what's left is not enough for lift because of the weight of the craft. In order to get the total amount needed to lift the craft, we must now take the craft itself, the frame of it, and the center disc, and now get the charge from the piezo to reach all of it. In order to accomplish this, we're going to have to make the piezo buzzer think that the top rotating disc and the center plate are actually one thing. It will have to be at a point where it goes so low but does not spark over to the center plate. That way we can get as much energy as we possibly can to counteract the smaller disc on the top and begin to lift. However, we're going to have to find a point in this where the energy itself must be higher than the value of the energy that we're putting into it originally. In this experiment, I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to manipulate the center plate. By tapping on it, I can change the actual octave of the center plate, and I'm going to put it in a different harmonic state. As you noticed in the last tap, the actual amount of voltage is actually increased, and the amount of energy going through it is much more than what it actually came into it. Let's take a listen to it in real time. Huh. It just picked up a lot of energy as soon as I tapped that thing. Went back down a little bit. As you can see, the energy itself picked up in the craft. It didn't just pick up a little bit, it picked up a lot. It has to do with the harmonics of the craft. Most people are in between three to four or six to seven in a harmonic level. I looked for the fifth harmonic, the harmonic that aluminum resonates in. There's a much easier way to reach this harmonic level. We simply have to take the ultrasound device and push the button. Each time you do, it changes the octave in the center plate until you get to the harmonic level that'll actually produce more energy going out than what actually came into it. The annoying clicking sound that you keep hearing is my piezo buzzer. It is going off at the beat rate of my upper disc and the entire craft. In order to hit this special state, I tied both motors together to one motor driver. I then ran the craft until it shook just slightly. There's a special point in the craft where you know it's in a great resonance state. Then you turn on your high voltage. You get it to the point where it's not sparking over, but it's not all the way full either right before it sparks over. In order to get that corrected where I had it when it created the bigger state, I needed to reduce it by half. Therefore, it's at about 50% to where it's maxed out before it sparks over. The next part of this is crucial. When you turn on your actual Tesla coil, 
It has to be in a state where it's not allowing the spark over on the upper disc to happen either. Then you turn on your piezo buzzer. Now you can start to adjust. When you're in the correct state with both motors, your piezo buzzer should start going off. I run mine at 4 volts, 1.2 amps. That gives it enough energy. As you can hear, it goes off like crazy. So, the special resonant state is happening then. You must get the correct octave. If you do not, you will not hit the fifth harmonic, and you will not get the energy spike. Let's look at it one more time when it's in the special state, so you can truly, really understand this for exactly what it is, and exactly how close I am in this craft. Just picked up a lot of energy as soon as I tapped that thing. Get back down a little bit. Once you're through getting this thing in a special resonance state, you're going to get what we wanted to in our upgraded lifter version. We're now going to get the top plate and center plate to be seen as the same thing by the piezo buzzer. And now they will start to lift. There's one more thing that we're going to have to correct, and it's a common misunderstanding in the gravity flyer. Do we put the wire on the disc? Do we not put the wire on the disc? Do we use metal tabs to put it on the disc? Let me explain this in a way that we can all understand this. Alexi was not trying to constantly put energy into the disc by touching it to the plate. That's a common misunderstanding. So what was he trying to do? He was trying to introduce a setup where you can tap the plate every once in a while. And we can see it in both the bottom here and the top in his original gravity flyer disc. They do not connect full time every time it rotates. They're intermittent. And there was an experiment that he did to prove why he did it. So let's set up this experiment. He's turning on his high voltage. He has aluminum down there on the bottom and he has a piece of PVC pipe. He's now going to take the positive and touch the aluminum. What is he trying to accomplish? A PVC pipe will get charged when you take a rag and rub it. Now he's trying to interact with that charge on the piece of PVC with the high voltage. What you want to notice is he can't do it right away. He's going to have to take the actual high voltage and take it off of the spot he has it on now. Then he'll have to place it back on there again. He cannot get it to operate without doing this. This goes into exactly how our discs are set when we take our high voltage and put it in. The more you tap it, the more it polarizes it or the more it changes the actual charge on it. Eventually, he gets the charge to stay. On a piece of PVC pipe, it is going to be much easier to just do it on the metal that we're doing it with. But as you can see, this experiment was one that he did. He put this understanding into the gravity flyer itself. Hopefully by seeing the actual experiment Alexa used, you can now understand why the actual tabs on this are not on the disc full time. That they are actually intermittent. They go on and go off. They go on and they go off. It's in its original design. This is also why it takes so long to build up charge in the bubble you create with your Tesla coil. Because he has to get two different effects on this, he has to sacrifice the amount of static energy that goes into it in order to get the amount of charge that changes or polarization. 
Now that we have a better idea of exactly what we're trying to create here in order to make this thing lift, what is the one characteristic that this thing will do that other things won't? What will it look like when you actually put it together? What will it create? Well, the answer is buoyancy. In order to understand this as buoyancy, we have to see this in three different parts. The white ball represents the piezo disc. The brown ball represents hitting our upper spinning disc. And the black ball represents the actual gravity flyer itself. When we get the piezo buzzer operating in the correct frequency, it acts like the white ball. You can actually push down on it and it will go into the water. Now, it just means that the craft itself is getting a little bit of energy from it, but not a lot. Then, when we move on to the brown ball, it represents the point in which our piezo is now interacting with our actual top spinning disc. The last part to happen is the actual black ball when it's fully submerged. This means the point in which the piezo disc has made contact with the entire craft. Now that we have a better understanding of exactly how we want to lift this craft, we know that our end result is going to be buoyancy in the craft. Let's now look at Alexi's gravity flyer while in lift. Does it have buoyancy? And the answer clearly is yes. So the last question would be, how is he able to manipulate it like this without it having any kind of problems? And the answer came into exactly how we changed the octave in the center plate. As you saw, I tapped it pretty hard in order to change it. And I told you that the piezo buzzer itself could actually change it. So why is that happening? Because the ground itself. The ground itself creates an extra negative. Therefore, it's easier to change it when it's on the ground. It is significantly harder to change it why it's in the air. Again, that's why he can do this. I hope everybody understands exactly how I see this thing now. We have a lift factor that we know will work. It's something that most people don't even understand on its face value exactly how it works. But changing the actual polarization of something or changing the charges on something means a big difference. When you get the attractive force on the bottom being so high and the amount on the top so small, you get a great lift. It's one of the true understandings of this thing that we really need to get into. There's other factors at play, but we're just looking at the actual lift of it and how it's being done in this craft. Anyway, hopefully today you got to see that, understand it a little bit more, and enjoy what you saw today. So if you like what you saw today, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. Do all those fun things and have yourself a great day. Thank you.